Welcome inside the turf room on the campus of Goshen College, inside the Rec Fitness Center. My name is Dante Stanton, and I'm joined now by the head coach of the Goshen College baseball team, the new head coach of the Goshen College baseball team, Brad Stoltz. Who's Brad, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate you having me, Dante. Doing all right? Things are well. I had a good breakfast at Lux this morning. Right. Uh, yeah, things are going well. Summer's been great. Great. A productive summer so far. Got to spend a lot of time with family and friends and got some some new friends that have moved to town and stuff. So, yep, things have been uh, great, productive, and, and just uh, been able to enjoy some time. That's great to hear. So um, you've been elevated from assistant head coach to the head coach role here at Goshen College. What, was, what were your emotions like? This is just about two weeks ago or so now that you, you've been elevated to this position. What was the first thought that crossed your mind? Uh, tell my family. I mean, obviously exciting time and, and great news for me and my family. And um, yeah, just ultimately just a good opportunity. Um, definitely knew I wanted to try and take a leap and, 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 and try out the new position and, and kind of give my all to the school and to the team. And, and I'm excited for that. And, and uh, a lot of good times are ahead. Now you have a long history with the team as a whole. Of course, you're a 2018 graduate. You played with the team. Do you feel like you have a stronger connection to Goshen College Baseball because of that previous experience as a player? I'd say so. I'd say so. Yeah, I, long story short, my family moved out uh, during my freshman year of Goshen from Pennsylvania. So we've been in Goshen now for almost nine years. Um, it's been great. You know, I, I at this point call Goshen my home. Um, playing on the baseball team was some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. So to be able to stay with the program uh, in a coaching role and now uh, as head coach is, is super exciting, great opportunity. Um, and, and yeah, there's just a lot of things that we can move forward and, and look ahead and be excited for. Was this ever the plan? Was this ever the plan when you were, when you were a player here that you, know, you wanna stay with the team and you wanna be the head coach? That's the goal. Not necessarily. Um, yeah, coaching out, out after I graduated, I think I had kind of like a gap year where I sort of helped volunteer coach a little bit, and that kind of got the ball rolling a little bit, thinking, you know, I kind of want to stay around the program, stay around a baseball field, uh, stay around the sport. It's just so great, and being around the, the campus is awesome, and just living in town has been has been great. You know, obviously you can get to get to the school quick and, and, and be around in the community and and it's just an exciting time, just an exciting time. You worked with Alex Childers, the former head coach, uh, a lot, obviously both as a player and as a, an assistant coach. Sure. What were some of the big things that you learned from him, um, both as a player, again, and, and in your time as, a, as an assistant coach? One thing that stands out is to be able to extend grace to people. Um, he, he, you know, is a great family man. He's, he's, a, he's a great friend. Um, a lot of people look up to him. I would just say his... His demeanor, the way he kind of went about his business, uh, he's a very caring individual, and um, being able to relate with players and 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 friends and stuff like that, he, um, yeah, being able to kind of extend grace when when people need it, know that people might be going through different parts of different times in their lives, maybe they need a bit more um, grace with that, um, and yeah, just kind of letting. Some of these students figure out their lives, figure out what works, what doesn't work. Uh, you know, just remem remembering that they're still young and, and are, are ever growing. And, and yeah, Alex has been uh, a very amazing person in my life. As a younger coach, uh, you know, a coach pre-30s here, do you feel like you have a stronger connection to the players? Uh, because you, you kind of know what they're going through right now. It, it's not that distant from when you were that age as well. Do you feel like you have a better connection because of that? I'd say so. I feel like I'm able to help the players, um, help relate with the players. And, and again, yeah, I, I've gone through the program, and so they obviously know that, and I'm able to, to help them and, and relate with them. I think it's good um, for the program. Uh, yeah, it's, it's always good to know that guys can reach out and, and it feels very much like a friendship. I mean, obviously there's, um, yeah, a, a little bit of, you know, authority over them or whatever, but ultimately, um, yeah, ton of great guys, and I feel like uh, I'm able to relate with them. That's good. Let's talk about the last season a little bit, mm -hmm. 10 and 38, some strides from the year before, um, you know, seven more wins, uh, looking to go 
of course, further in the same direction. Last year was improvement. This year, what needs to be happening this year to take it to the next level? Because I, you know, you've seen a lot of uh, individual pieces coming together. Mm -hmm. How do you put the whole thing together? Yeah, I mean, we collectively as a team just need to be better. Um, we had a lot of good moments last year, and I think just ultimately just stringing that together and building some good momentum in the right direction. Um, we were feeling like a pretty good ball team going into conference play. We took two of two, or two of four rather, from Marion to start um, after having a couple wins down in Kentucky uh, the, the weekend prior. So we, we feel pretty good. We just kind of need to put some things together, um, some, some clutch hits at times, some, some better pitching at times. Ultimately, um, the players, coaches collectively have to just be better, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to, to making it happen. So when does it start? When does the preparation for the next season begin? You've got fall ball in a couple of months. When does that all get rolling? Right. It's kind of all kind of begun in a lot of ways, right? So we're keeping up on recruiting, and, and we have, uh, uh, as of today, just some final uh, transfer players uh, potentially making their way to, to, to our school here uh, next year. So, yeah, in a lot of ways it's already begun. Once the players come back uh, to campus, uh, that next day we'll probably have a team meeting, kind of go through that first week. Uh, but yeah, once once they come back, it's pretty much hit the ground running. Uh, we've got six weeks of practice in the fall. Uh, we'll do some conditioning in October, November, and early part of December. And then once the guys pretty much come back from winter break, it's pretty much go time from there uh, with four weeks until the start of the season. It's all in. That's the fun part, pretty right? Pretty much, yeah. That January is always interesting, right? You know, we don't have nice enough weather to, to kind of practice outside very often, whereas some teams down south you know, we're always surrounded by some nice weather and whatnot. So we kind of make do with, uh, with the space we have. This turf room is obviously great, and, and the, gym, the gym floor is always nice. But kind of getting down that first week in, in Union, Kentucky, is always uh, nice to finally get out on a field and get into some nice weather. Now, one of the things I've noticed, there's been an uh, influx of coaching changes here at Goshen College. Every coach has different expectations for the team than the coach before them. What are your expectations for this team in 2023, 2024? I, I just, we have to get better every day, ultimately. Um, you know, that, whether that be in practice um, during the season. Just kind of know, knowing and being aware of what we can improve on, uh, being intentional about fixing it, and then, and then growing from there. Uh, that will just honestly help us kind of visualize our success and then hopefully see it. Um, and, and obviously more wins than 10 would be great. Um, obviously. <laughs> but ultimately, like, we just have to get better as a team collectively. And, and that means off, uh, you know, off the field as well. And, uh, but I'm super excited for, for this group. We're bringing in some, some new faces. Uh, graduated four last year, so we have we are returning a lot of guys as well. Uh, so certainly exciting times, yeah. Hoping hoping to make the the tournament this year. Any individual players that you're really especially excited to work with, who you know, maybe had a strong year last year or on the cusp of something big last year that you know can take it to the next level this year? I mean, yeah, we have some we have some good young pitching. Uh, AJ Len, Preston Anderson are, are two names that uh, they they were big arms for us last year. Um, and then Josh Rubio, he's a returning junior. You know, he uh, caught a lot of games for us last year. Uh, he did a good job on the defensive side, and, and I, I see him making some strides this year. Uh, Lance Wilson's another name. Josh Murphy, those guys can be valuable arms for us. Uh, but we are bringing in some, some fresh arms pitching, freshmen and some transfer guys uh, that we're excited about as well. I want to end things with maybe a little bit more of a question on the difficult side here, one that might be uh, on the thought-provoking end of things. Um, what kind of legacy do you want to leave here? You're the 12th head coach in Goshen College history at, on the baseball side. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you want people to remember your head coaching reign as? Just, uh, just a compassionate person. Um, Someone that's able to lead some young men to, to do great things in their lives, to set them up for success, whether it be on or off the field. Um, just someone who uh, cared about his players and you know, was respected by the community and, and uh, people on campus. And yeah, just knowing that uh, you know, I'm here to help serve people and be a resource and a guide for them in any way, again, on and off the field. Um, you know, whether they're going into their work life after college 
or whether they're just trying to figure out some things on the baseball side or even on the class side of things, someone that is just able to help and, and cares about other people. Brad, I'm excited for the upcoming season. I really am. Thank appreciate you, you Dante. Appreciate, appreciate you a lot. You. Looking forward to calling some games for the, for the baseball team as well. Looking forward to hearing them. 91.1 The Globe. Go check it out. It's good stuff. Great place. Great place to, to work and everything. You would know. You would know. <laughs> Former uh, co-station manager. Yes. Yes, Jason Samuel. I love everything you've done for me. Uh, yeah, you've been an immense help in my career. Uh, awesome advisor and, and, and great station, uh, general manager of the, of the station. It's truly the best. All right. Thank you again, Thank you. Brad. I appreciate you. That's going to wrap up this interview here. Make sure you stay tuned for more Globe content on our social media platforms, Facebook, or Instagram, and Twitter, all at 911 The Globe. Reporting for Globe TV and Globe Sports, I'm Dante Stanton.